Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at lesson 10.4, Compound Events. Today in your notes, you're going to be looking for 10 things. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing I want you to think about is using the sample space and trying to find the sample space and how many different pizzas are possible. You have two th types of crust, and then you have four types of styles. So go ahead and try this on your own. Try to find the sample space, what type of crust and what type of style for each type of pizza and then how many different combos are there. So once you've already found the sample space, you notice that you have a thin crust pizza and you have stuffed crust pizza. For each type of pizza, you can get Hawaiian, Mexican, pepperoni, or veggie. That's the same thing true for stuffed crust, Hawaiian, Mexican, pepperoni, or veggie. This is gonna show us that we can get stuffed crust in four different ways and thin crust in four different ways. So four plus four is gonna give us eight. Another way we can do it too, you can add on maybe a different style of crust. Let's maybe try finding a deep dish crust. So now we will have thin crust, stuffed crust, and deep dish, dish crust. Sorry, too hard to say. Go ahead and pause right now to see your sample space. And once you're done, click play. Okay, so we notice that still we have four types of thin crust and four types of stuffed crust and also four types of deep dish crust. Based on what we found, there are still four types of thin, four types of stuffed, and four types of deep dish, so together those are gonna equal 12 types. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to try to find the number of outcomes, and that's called the fundamental counting principle. This is what you're gonna write in your notes. That's just when you have a number of possible outcomes and you just multiply them together. So let's go ahead and take time now to write down our um, vocab term. Once you're done, click play so we can continue on. So this one I'm gonna show you how to do. Find the total number of possible outcomes of rolling a number cube and flipping a coin. Well, on the number cube, there are six options and flipping a coin, there are two options. So to find the number of possible outcomes, I'm just gonna multiply them together and I'm gonna get 12. So 12 will be my answer here. So all you're doing is just multiplying all the possible outcomes together. Go ahead and try this one on your own. How many different outfits can you make from four pairs of jeans, seven t-shirts, and three pairs of shoes? Go ahead and pause the video now to try number four on your own, and once you're done, click play. So for number four, you should have done four times seven times three to get your total number of outcomes, and that's gonna be 84 different combinations. Here's another one that you're gonna try. Again, let's go ahead and pause it to try to find the number of outcomes, and once you're done, click play. So here, once again, we're gonna do four t-shirts times five pairs of jeans times five pairs of shoes, and we're gonna get 100 different combinations. Number six is a little bit different. Find the number of possible outcomes of spinning this spinner right here and choosing a number one to five. Go ahead and pause it to try number six on your own, and once you're done, click play. All right, so on the spinner, we have four options, and from choosing a number one to five, we have five options. One, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna multiply four times five, and we're gonna get 20 different outcomes for number six. Number seven in your notes, you're gonna go at, this is your second um, vocabulary term, and that's compound events. And that's just when they consist of two or more events and you're just gonna multiply the probabilities together. This is just um, like we've done before, we are gonna take fractions and multiply them. So that's taking it back to maybe chapter two when we learn that. So um, just make sure that you simplify the um, outcome as well once you get it. Okay, let's go ahead and pause the video now so you can write this down. And once you're done, click play to see how it's done. So here's an example I'm gonna try first and then you can try the next few on your own. What's the probability of rolling a number greater than four and flipping tails? Well, the numbers that are greater than four are five and six. So that is two options out of six options. And then here, if I'm flipping tails, I can only have one option out of two. What I'm gonna do is multiply these two fractions together, one out of two and two out of six, I'll, I will initially get two out of 12, kind of working backwards here on the screen, but I'm gonna reduce that to one six. So my answer will be one sixth. So here's number eight that you're gonna try. 
Go ahead and find the probability of each event. Once you're done, click play and remember to multiply those fractions. Okay, the first one says rolling at most four. At most four, that means the numbers one, two, three, and four. So those are four numbers out of six. And then flipping heads is going to be still one out of two. We're going to multiply here. Four times one is four. Six times two is 12. And then just reduce this all the way down to one third. So the probability of rolling at most four and flipping heads would be a one out of three chance. The next one we're going to look at is rolling two number cubes. What's the probability of rolling double threes? So again, let's go ahead and pause the video now, try number nine, and once you're done, click play. All right, so if we're rolling double threes, the first time we roll it, that's a one out of six chance, and the other time we roll it, it's a one out of six chance as well. So what we're going to do is just take our two fractions together, one six times one six, and we'll get one out of 36 chances that we would actually roll double threes. The last one for number 10 is kind of a progression. You're going to try um, a chart, a, um, kind of like a tree chart or tree diagram. Um, I'm going to start you off here. You're going to flip three nickels. So you're flipping three times. So obviously the first time you flip, you can either get heads or tails. What you're going to do is build off of this. So each individual time you can only flip heads or tails. Once you're done with your tree diagram, you're going to see an outcome and you're going to list the outcomes to figure out what would be the probability of flipping two heads and one tail. So go ahead and pause the video now to try to finish out the tree diagram and once you're done click play so we can check the work at the end. Okay, so the first time we flipped it, we're flipping, we either get a heads or a tails. The second time we flip it, we can either get heads or tails. Same thing here. The third time we flip it, we can either get heads or tails. Okay, so now we just look at all of our outcomes. We can do heads, 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 tails, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, 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 heads, heads. Tails, heads, tails. Tails, tails, heads. Or tails, tails, tails. Okay. The question says flipping two heads and one tail. Here are two heads, one tail. Two heads, one tail. Two heads, one tail. And that looks like it's about it. So. We have one, two, three times out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So my probability of flipping two heads and one tail would be three out of eight. That's going to conclude our video today. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.